Welcome to the WAN Show, everyone. The truth is, I screwed up this week. Yeah. It's very obvious that, um, I mean, I just, I couldn't conceal it anymore. We were paid by NVIDIA for our RTX 4060 Ti review. And the scariest part of what I just said is that a not insignificant number of people are going to take that at face value, <laughs> not watch any more of the video, and believe it for the rest of their days. Let's talk about how confusing people found our review of the 4060 Ti. We're also going to be talking to you guys about how confusing I'm finding Sony's new handheld accessory. It's a Wi-Fi based PlayStation Five streaming thing did they learn nothing from the nintendo wii u what else we got going on this week it does it does seem like the wii u was just like actually too early at this point it's starting to feel that it way really really feels like it uh wow um invisible pc setup this was actually super cool did you see this I read the comments. Oh, great. We'll talk about it later because you'll probably need to see it if you want to talk about it more specifically. But who knows? Maybe. We'll see. The National Eating Disorders Association replaced oh. a helpline oh. with a chat bot oh. because clearly no one there has watched The WAN Show. Oh. The show is brought to you today by Vessi, SignalWire, and Corsair. All right, we're going to jump right over to my laptop here. And this is one of those things where, Luke, I feel like we need to open the conversation back up. Open it back up about shadow banning comments. Shadow banning people, do it. Because... Just do it. I actually found the comment section of this video extremely difficult to handle. Um, let's see. See, some people get it. Please keep calling out this nonsense. This was an extremely negative review. It started with, oh, thank you, NVIDIA. At least you didn't downgrade this graphics card. I literally, literally <laughs> said something actually positive after some negative things. And then I said, okay, that last one wasn't sarcastic. Because I am aware that a not insignificant portion of our audience does have a little bit of trouble picking up on sarcasm, whether it's uh, like a social cue challenge thing or whether it's the fact that English isn't their second language. English is a really weird language. Rather is their second language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I, I made it actually explicit. And the number of comments that are just... Let, let me let me see if I can let me see if I can let me see if I can find this. Um, oh man, this is see this is frustrating because the second you need them, they're not there. Yeah, the second one I need it. Yeah, it's it's not there. That's which, just that's just how like presenting things on stage or on camera. It's just how it's just how it works. Okay, where's my phone? Because I sent you one on Discord that was just yes. yeah. absolutely mind blowing. The point is not to call it any specific user. Don't go looking for this. But I've got a couple comments in a row here. Like, why can't you just say it's a bad deal? You're not crapping on Nvidia. Makes it look like you're caping for Nvidia. Not saying you are, but that's what it looks like. This review also feels short and unrigorous. This is a rare thumbs down for me. We had probably more game benchmarking yeah. than just than we've ever had before. Extremely rigorous. The whole thing is automated now. All of our testing, this is something to note. All of our testing was fresh on the latest drivers for every one of those cards. That is extremely unusual, but it's also extremely important. I mean, you can include numbers from three months ago or six months ago, but as we've seen, especially with Intel Arc, and especially when AMD launches anything, within a span of two, three, six months, you might as well just, you might as well just say, yeah, I hate AMD and don't feel like showing them in a fair light. You might as well just say that, because if you're not including fresh numbers, that's not valid. It's, it's just actually useless. You might as well just kind of go, you might as well approximate. Um, well, I didn't have the XT, so I 
I don't know, it has 10% more CUs, so I bumped the clock speed 10%. This is an approximation. And you know, you know what? It would probably be reasonably close, but it's disingenuous to label the chart in you know, 6700 XT or whatever it is. Uh, this, this next one. Uh, thank you. I've been, I haven't been watching LTT, and now I remember why. The only reason I clicked was I was hoping the title was sarcasm, but weird how he kept looking for positive things to say when the card is straight up garbage, trying to stay in NVIDIA's good books. I haven't been in NVIDIA's good books years. for like a couple years now. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's not how this works. That's not how any of this works. Um, the reason that we're looking for positive things to say is because our reviews are designed to be everything you need to know about the card. And the price, the price is fluid, right? So if you come back to this video in a couple of years and you want to know what features does it have, how does it compare to the cards that are you know, similar around it. And honestly, one of the things the labs did a great job of this time was including older cards. The number of positive comments we got from people saying, wow, thank you so much for putting a couple of older cards on the graph for a change. Now I have some idea how this compares when I'm you know, looking for an upgrade was really awesome. I, I just want to give a huge shout out to the writers, huge shout out to the lab. I'm actually really, really proud of our 4060 Ti review and our uh, RX 7600 review. There are a couple of things we got wrong. I think we had a, a table in the 4060 Ti review that said it had a 16X interface. It has an 8X interface. Uh, that is a problem if you're upgrading an older platform. On a modern platform, it's not a problem. It doesn't affect the numbers that we showed you guys, uh, but that is something that we we could have gotten a little bit better. And I think there were a couple small things in the 7600, but every time we release uh, a new GPU review, we're getting a little bit cleaner about it. It's just, it's a lot of moving parts, guys. Um, but this is one of those things that I'm just looking at going, give me a reason not to start shadow banning again. Like this is another one that I saw on today's video. It was a short, on the Billy Billy gold play button that we got for reaching a million subscribers on Billy Billy. Yeah, super cool. Which is super awesome. Like, m huge shout out. Uh, Dennis has been deeply involved in that over the years. The whole time. Uh, Andy's much. been involved in that over the years and, you know, helped foster the community over there. Our translation team over in China, uh, all the members, past and present, uh, just shout out all those people for, for making this possible. Um, and, you know, this is the takeaway that someone got was not expecting Linus to take a knee to China after saying he will never visit because of the CCP. What a hypocrite. Um, so here's something. It actually costs us money to run that Chinese channel. Uh, I, because I won't go to China anymore. I have no way of getting any of the ad revenue that we've made from that channel out of it, out of China. It's all just stuck there. It's just something where uh, there was a fan group that was translating our videos pirating them, uploading them to Billy Billy. And we kind of went, hey, please don't do that. But how about this? How about we actually compensate you for it and we'll make the whole thing official. And that way we can we can have a proper presence there uh, with translations and, and all that good stuff. If and it's going to get pirated anyways, we might as well do it properly. We might as well do it properly. And it's just one of those things that I look at and I go, you know, why do I have to read that? Why do I ever, whether you're trolling which honestly, I don't think so. I, I've got a pretty good radar for it these days. No, some people actually are that brain dead. Um, so whether you're trolling, if you are, or whether your takes are just that bad, I just... Uh, I used to care about this a lot. Like shadow banning? Yeah. Like thinking it was a bad thing? Yeah. And then what happened? Is it just because Not I send you these... Not even sort of anymore. Like, I'm actually completely on the other side now. And this might piss some people off, but it's just the reality. In my opinion, back when I was a stalwart defender of, like, you shouldn't ban people, the internet was in a bit of a different spot. And now, like, I don't know. You, you, you get how many comments every day? And it's like, yeah, I don't know. I, is that helping anything? Yeah. Like, like actually at all? Is this, is this beneficial for anything? Are you going to change anything? Is this, is any discourse coming from this that is helpful? Yeah, so I've been scrolling. Here's another one. This review was way too lenient. Uh, this card is garbage. End of story. 
it's not garbage. That's just, I, I, I don't know what to tell you. It's not garbage. I feel like, I feel like people have gotten kind of a twisted, uh, like a twisted perception of what garbage is at the right price. It, it does it. Do you plug it into your computer and does it shart FPS onto your monitor? Does it do so without overheating, uh, without causing blue screens? Does it, does it harm your dog? You know, like, is it, is it bad? No, it's overpriced. It's just not worth it. That's its problem. Yeah. NVIDIA is it's marketing a 50 series card as a 60 TI card. And that's a problem. And pricing it as such. Yeah. And that's a problem. But it doesn't make it garbage. It makes it overpriced. Like if you found it and it was that card and it was on a mad discount. Yeah. Maybe it's all right. Absolutely. And happy 4534 says no criticism allowed on LTT videos, I guess. Say anything bad, they shadow ban you. Let's see, that's not true at all. Um, you know, we have no that is problem. Not the point. We have no problem with constructive criticism. Uh, what it is, is I just, I don't. <sighs> Disingenuous arguments uh, starting to, f trying to start things just for the sake of trying to start things. Like, I don't know. Yeah. I just, I, I just can't. And oh man, I, we've actually got a video coming where I, I kind of, I kind of lean into this. I was having some fun with it. Um, I, I kind of brought back the scrapyard war spirit though. So everyone's getting kind of, you know, mad at me for not going hard enough on Nvidia. And I shouldn't say everyone. I mean, the like dislike ratio on that video is still about ninety two percent, ninety three percent, or something like that. It might even be higher now because it tends to be that it's that initial rush of people, like the really hardcore tech people, that are like, "Well, oh, this this review wasn't critical enough," or whatever the case may be. But the number of people that are mad at me for not going hard enough at Nvidia, as if I have any kind of influence whatsoever on NVIDIA. It's, it's just comical to me at this point. So I wrote up a, a little intro uh, because I, I wanted to address that, right? So it kind of it kind of goes along the lines of like, are you tired of GPU manufacturers screwing over your wallet? Well, it's time to take action. Here, let me show you what to do. And I kind of do a little flourish with my wallet and put it in my pocket. And then do you remember the Windows 3.1 sound that's like, da da <laughs> then, I did it. I didn't open it. <laughs> then I worked with Nicole from the uh, from the editing team to. There's this really cool transition that we can do where if you do a whip pan and then a whip pan back, you can use two completely different shots as long as that blur is of approximately the same things. So it actually whips away from me to me standing in the studio, and I'm like. Your performative boycott means nothing. You have more than enough GPUs for a th like. I basically get to be my own <laughs> yeah, yeah, like yeah. peanut your gallery. Yeah, uh, yeah. Your, your performative boycott means nothing. Blah blah. Your anyway, um, and and I'm like, Burr! and then it like whips back to me. And it was a really fun video because I basically went scrapyard war shopping and showed that you can get a sick system upgrade for a great price right now is it getting better Good. and not give That's nvidia awesome. or amd any money in fact cool i had so much fun that i'm kind of thinking we might have to bring it back no way i think we might have no to no way it was so fun man i we're back boys I let's go i basically said a, i set a budget Woo. for myself um all right I set a budget for myself of approximately the price of a 40, 4060 Ti. Okay. I managed to beat it by about 30% nice. while still saving like 20 bucks. Oh, performance beat it by 30%. Oh, yeah. And saved 20 bucks. Oh, yeah. Scrapyard Wars. Oh, and, that's the best. And I have almost a year of warranty on the card I got. Damn. <laughs> okay. What could go wrong? <laughs> That's sick. I won and won and won some more, and I got a video out of it, which is winning four times. That's another. That's a win. Yeah, that's exactly. A win. And so I'm looking at it, going like, "Oh, yeah, uh, yeah." We got another comment over here on the forty. He must have been paid to review this card. People like that clearly have no idea what it's like to work with a brand on a paid promotion. You do. Yeah. Would you be allowed to open with a sarcastic, no. oh, thank you, NVIDIA, for at least not taking away any VRAM? No. 
Not even sort of. You sure? Yeah. Are you sure? Uh, dude, we Because had... it seems like you would be able to. <laughs> Based on some of the comments. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder how much here's, had, here's another one right under it. We've had stuff back for like a lot less than that. This, this is this is great. Uh, hold on, hold on. Where did where did it go? Must have been must have been paid. Super cool, excellent, smart comment. Wonder how much they paid. This <sighs> video doesn't feel so honest, but I get it from a business perspective. No, uh, you actually uh, don't. You get nothing. You're not on our side. <laughs> you missed the whole thing. <sighs> whoosh 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 whoosh. Um, I, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just, anyway, massive, massive shout out the team. Really, really happy with those reviews. Really excited for the direction the lab is going. Uh, we've had some really cool and exciting meetings lately with the team over there. I think we're going to be ready to roll out some of the category specific channels. Uh, cause I think I've talked about this on the WAN show before, but one of the, one of the directions that I see online content going is, I see mega channels like the MKBHDs and LTTs. Actually, even to a lesser degree, uh, Marquez, because he is kind of niche focused. A little bit more focused. Especially now that he's split cars off of MKBHD mm -hmm. onto um, uh, autofocus. Yeah. It's kind of mobile devices and consumer electronics. Uh, it's, so it's relatively narrowly focused, right? Compared to... Ours. Whereas we are as broad as okay, this week, uh, is what, this thing powered by something? This week we uploaded a tour of ASML, who makes the lithography machines that um, help manufacturers like Intel and TSMC produce the world's most cutting edge microchips. Uh, so like super super deep technical video, and then we also built a silly hundred thousand dollar computer for playing minecraft we water cooled a bed i basically did a youtuber video where i talked about you know what's going on in my personal life and my job role changed like we are all over the map Get reviews of a couple gpus um so the way that i see it it's going to be much much harder to attract a loyal audience to a channel and therefore build a loyal audience for a channel unless you're focused and the way that I see it, if you have a power supply focused channel, you're going to get two different viewers for that. You're going to get people who really want to stay up on what's going on in power supplies. And then you're going to get people who haven't cared about a power supply in six years, but they're building a new one. computer and they're yep. going, sorry, 16 pin. What? I, how, uh, what's I don't care. Just tell me a good one. Right? So you're going to get a lot of those. Our goal our goal for a power supply specific channel will be, and I, you guys can quote me on this, to have a video for every power supply. Like every new one that comes out? Well, we're going to have to work on Are you on including some, server ones? Some back catalog too. No. Okay. No, like ATX. It ATX could be power money supply. money in doing server ones. There could, but I mean, almost nobody builds a server anymore. Ah, uh, yeah, fair enough. It's almost yeah. exclusively bare bones. And well, I could sense. I could see us having a more enterprise uh, IT sort of focused Stuff, channel at some maybe point. Not that where we would look at bare bones servers yeah. and look at these at these platforms as a whole. But that would be something that would come later and it would be more along the lines of how we would test something like laptops. Laptops Right. Oh, man. Yeah. Laptops are deep. To cover a laptop properly, you have to have your methodologies down for everything. Battery testing, screen testing, keyboard testing, uh, processor testing. Oh, don't forget that you're going to have to account for different environmental factors. Uh, don't forget that you need to test it in different power profiles, depending on whether it's plugged in or unplugged. Uh, laptops are going to take some time. Oh, yeah, right. And don't forget that per model, per chassis, they're available in, I don't know, about 25 different configurations. Um, I, <laughs> do you remember when I optimistically bought one of every config of the M1 MacBook thinking, okay, we're going to get our, like our laptop methodology down and we're going to be the outlet that actually can tell you exactly which configuration to buy, like bang for the buck. And then they basically all got deployed to people who wanted MacBooks internally <laughs> and scattered to the high winds. <laughs> yeah, that was a good investment. <laughs> Anywho. 
the idea is that eventually we're going to get there and then all the ones that we don't need anymore we'll just divest ourselves of by flipping them at lttstore.com or on ebay or whatever we'll figure all of that yeah, out yeah, yeah. um it's time for us to jump into our next topic here apparently dan is not going to let me talk about haters anymore do you want can we talk about this this sony thing yeah, Sony PS5 announcements. At the their PlayStation Showcase, Sony announced their new handheld uh, projected to come out later this year called Project Q. The handheld allows remote play of PS5 games via Wi-Fi at up to 1080p and 60fps. It has an 8-inch LCD screen, we have no idea how much it will cost, and it's unclear whether it will do anything else other than stream PS5 games or whether it will be able to use cellular networks. Considering they specified Wi-Fi, I kind of doubt it, but we'll see. Yeah, that's one of those things where the answer is no. Yeah. Um, also, lossless wireless earbuds. Okay. Uh, the PlayStation Showcase also highlighted a number of upcoming games. Sony announced slash showed off several standard PS5 games, the only notable exclusive being Spider-Man 2. Uh, okay. Some notable non-exclusives, a remake of Metal, Metal Gear 3, a reboot of Bungie's Marathon series. That's... I know, right? Sony owning Bungie just makes my brain hurt. Yeah, but it's non-exclusive. Which is also, the whole thing is just like, uh, it's weird, but maybe really cool. I haven't been able to look into uh, any of that yet because I had a very busy week. But I'm pretty interested in the idea of them rebooting Marathon. We'll see. Um, Alan Wake 2, a Splatoon alike called Foam Stars. And the one Riley is most excited about, the Talos Principle 2. I think quite a few people are going to be excited about that. It's a PvP extraction shooter. Oh. I think you've got his attention. Oh my! Bungie making a PvP extraction shooter is extremely exciting. Like The Division. Okay, that part ugh, makes it a lot worse. Okay, hopefully it's not like The Division at all. Uh, the Division was terrible, in my opinion, but you Ouch. Know, I'm sure someone liked it. Okay, I want to talk about this wireless console thing. Is it just <laughs> me? Or... Like, very little use for this? <sighs> Why don't you just play on your TV? I don't know. I don't know how to feel about this. Okay, so first of all, here, let's uh, flip over to my laptop. This is this is apparently what it's going to look like. I um, think it looks cool. Yeah, it looks it really cool. It actually looks like it's probably comfortable to hold and stuff, too. Okay, here's my problem. I don't know how to feel about this because I've been kind of all over the place. Yeah. I loved the NVIDIA Shield. Yes. And yes, Android games did hands. exist that could be played with a controller, but at the time, they were way less common. So it was fundamentally only a device for streaming your gaming PC to a handheld form factor. And I was crazy in love with that thing. It was, it was how I played games when I had infant children, because you basically had the kid kind of in the thing in your arms and you could play video games. There was no way you could sit at a computer. So that was it. That was how I could play video games. Loved that. And then, you know, I was less bullish on the Steam Link, which is basically the same idea, except that it allows you to play your gaming PC games on your TV with a Steam controller or some other controller or whatever else. And then I'm trying to think of kind of what came what came next here. I never really used the NVIDIA Shield console for that, for that function. It just didn't really appeal to me. And then when Logitech, okay, when Logitech announced the G Cloud, I was looking at it going, well, this is just kind of stupid because you could get a Steam Deck for like $100 more that actually has a full computer in it. But then I reviewed the G Cloud, and even though I was a certified hater of the thing, I actually really liked it. Like, I really liked it. I've got nothing against the concept of this. I'm a little bit concerned about what I expect the price might be. Well, then there's the Wii U. Did you ever use the wireless controller pad function of the Wii U? Did you ever even look at that screen? Yeah. Really? I, I, am, okay. a, I am a rare Pikachu Wii U enjoyer. I really liked the Wii U. I was I actually genuinely very much liked the Wii U. We I found even one. loved. Okay, so the Super Mario Bros. Whatever <laughs> it was that came out for the Wii U, new Super Mario Brothers Wii U. It or whatever, had a yeah. four-player co-op feature. Yes, it did with a fifth person. 
that used that main controller had their own screen and you could put down like emergency platforms for your teammates you could also troll them by while they're like mid jump put a platform right in front of them and they smack into it and fall down you could like try to fight your own team from actually completing the level and all this kind of stuff extremely fun that's very fair. fun that's very fair. unique experience too that's fair and very fun I played a bunch of different games on the Wii U. They're all really good. I am deeply convinced that the only reason why the Wii U didn't do well was because no one knew that A, it existed, or B, what the hell it even was. My group of relatively techie friends, when I first bought it, I invited them all over because I wanted to play the five-person sure. Super Mario Bros. thing. Or, uh, yeah, Super Mario Bros. Yeah. Um, all of them, literally all of them, thought that I bought some expansion for my Wii. None of them knew that it was a dedicated console. Swedish made? What did I say? Did I say something wrong? No, no, you just... An expansion for your Wii? I'm oh. asking if it's Swedish made. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I, 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 I really enjoyed the Wii U. And that controller, one, that is sort of very... That is his bag, baby. <laughs> 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 that, contr <laughs> that, contr <laughs> that controller was actually very comfortable. That's true. Yeah. Yep, it's true. Like, more comfortable than the Switch is by a lot, in my opinion. Okay. Um, I do want to yeah, keep anyways. talking about yes, this paradigm, though, because I had another opportunity to look at a device that's basically this, and I have to confess, I kind of blew them off because I just didn't really care. Uh, yeah. So you always expect it to suck, and then it's actually okay. Well, no, it's not that, because I was so jazzed on the shield. Right? Mm. So here, hold on a second. I'm just going to jump back over to my laptop for a second here. Uh, this is from Peekdo, of oh all God. people. Uh, remember remember these guys. They had the, this like low latency uh, HDMI streaming thing. Uh, so it's millimeter wave, which is a problem because that means the range is going to be pretty foobar. But 60p, uh, 1080 60p, so 60 hertz. And the the pitched sort of the pitched sort of use case for this thing was actually streaming your PlayStation 5 to it compatible with PC, PlayStation, Xbox, Windows, Switch, etc. 2 and a half milliseconds delay up to 30 meters or whatever and 3 hour battery life. And I kind of looked at this and I went That seems really niche. What well, and Sony just laid down a big fat, I think you're wrong, Linus. Yeah. Because they are releasing a first party accessory that's just this. If this thing could work over cell networks, it would be sick. It doesn't. It, okay. I know it doesn't. You don't want, see, people keep asking for this. You don't want to game over a cellular network. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. yeah. And, f okay. I, I know. Some games would be totally I know. Fine. I hear you. Someone would be totally I can fine. actually hear your keys heating up as you furiously type a message about how much you love using Moonlight over a cell network or whatever. Steam Link. I, I know. There are certain types of games. You want to play like a puzzle game or something. Civ. No problem. By all means, play over a cellular network. But wherever you live, A, your cell network must be a lot better than mine. So maybe you're in like Tokyo or you're in like Seoul or something like yeah, that. Yeah. Sure, fine. A, your cell network is a lot better than mine. B, you must have a really great data plan. Both of those things are true in a lot of yes, places in the world. People absolutely. run their house internets off cell. Absolutely. However... Even under those ideal conditions, there are certain genres of games that are just not going to be fun with the additional latency. And I, I just, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't compromise on that. I just wouldn't. Um, I, I, I love what Sony's doing right now, though. PSVR 2 is awesome. Yeah. This, I don't know if it's awesome. It looks cool. But it's cool. Yeah. It's different. Yeah. It's and not I'm, just. I am 100% certain. Well, it's not necessarily for me. That some people will love this thing. Like Microsoft, how how hard have they lost this generation of gaming at this point? You you could play PlayStation games in the bath. Yeah, I could. That's pretty sweet. I won't, but yeah, I could. But it's because not necessarily one hundred percent for you. But it, like, someone could fit that use case. 
That's pretty cool. I I do I do wonder, and Conrad's echoing this in the in the chat. Uh, how much is it going to cost? Them not announcing a price is like a little sus. It is. It is a. It is a wee wee bit sus. I think it's not. I think it's not going to be cheap. I mean, Me here, either. here. You know what? I I can get you pricing for that peak dough thing because realistically, it's the same same hardware. Um. You know what? I don't know if I ever got a final price because I think it was a Kickstarter or something. Right. That was one of the other reasons that we didn't cover it. I don't. I don't like covering Kickstarters. Speaking of which, we should talk about that sponsor spot fail this week on TechWiki. I'll we'll, we'll address that a little bit later. Don't let me forget. Um, no, I, I don't have a, I don't have a price for this thing. So if I had to guess, I'd say it'll probably be similar to the G Cloud. So in the two fifty yeah. two fifty US to two ninety nine, I think this is going to be a very expensive accessory. But again, I do think some people will eat that. But that's something that Sony has demonstrated that they're totally willing to do i mean the playstation vr2 is an accessory that costs as much as the bloody console yeah like at, okay like, it's not that's not cheap by any means at all <laughs> but like <coughs> it's not it's not 700 bucks because it's well, not dedicated handheld yeah you're price. not you're not buying a you're not you're, you're not buying an accessory you're buying a completely different experience yeah and yeah that's something that sony has done a really good job of here is creating different experiences and it's not going to have quite the mobility of the switch but man i gotta gotta take a moment and just appreciate how crap the switch is these days I own a Switch OLED, a, a top of the line. It's old now. Switch, if you will, and I own Tears of the Kingdom. You guys saw my copy that I bought on the short circuit, and I am currently in the process of getting my uh, my Yuzu all set up for the trip that Luke and I are going on, so that I can start Tears of the Kingdom on a platform that doesn't suck. Yeah, um, yeah. It, the Switch is over six years old. Yeah, and it was garbage when it came out. That's yeah. the worst part. Yep. By the way, uh, Jake Jake from the lab is ta is talking in the float plane chat about what I said about cellular networks and and game streaming. And he's like, yeah, the problem is not how many gigabits per second or whatever that you can get in a speed test. The problem is that this is real time data and latency matters. And so if anything arrives even ever so slightly out of order, it's going to be garbled. And that's something you simply can't control on a cellular network. It's extremely challenging. Um, and yeah, yeah, people are talking about like what, what ping time I get or how many megabits I get. That That is not the point. It's just a very, very, even though it feels the same to us. It's the same thing with frame times, right? I, yeah, I click link and page load. It feels the same to us, but it's a really different technology. Yep, yep, yep. All right. It's time for us to explain merch messages. If you want to send a message into the show, the way to do it is with the merch message. Hey, look, G or G just scored an insulated water bottle, 64 ounce at LTTstore.com. When you're in the checkout, cart. you can send, when you're in the cart, you can send a merch message and our producer, Dan, will try to respond to it. It's going to be a bit of a shorter show today because Luke and I have to catch a flight. We'll talk about that in a little bit. And uh, so our producer, Dan, might respond to it. He might just put it up on the bottom. And if there's no replies, uh, who knows? Maybe chat can help reply to your merch message. We might need some help from you guys today. Uh, or Dan is going to curate some of them for me and Luke to address later on during WAN Show After Dark. Since we're talking about what's going on on the store, why don't we tell you guys about a couple of new items? Uh, I don't see them in the thing here. Yes, I do see them in the thing here. We just launched our premium joggers. Who is this with that drip? It's got to be like Bellinance or something. Oh, He's no, got the, not... whoever oh, it is, they've, Sammy. they've okay. got the swag stance going on. Definitely got the swag stance. Um, these are super nice, by the way. Got them in two different colors. I might oh. actually have to check these yep. out. Black and olive. Man, love this. Great pose. I do want some some joggers. Sammy, there, there, there's Sammy. He gets the poses, man. Yeah, Colton, uh, he tries. Colton doesn't. <laughs> it's the, there's the, we've got contrast going on. <laughs> yeah. Solid, solid effort, Vance. 
Uh, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, these are these are super nice. Oh, look at this. What a nice write-up. You know how we've talked about how we like don't do a good enough job sometimes? Hey, let's go. Made of 100% recycled polyester. Sick. Very cool. Uh, we also launched one other product this week that you guys are going to want to check out. I wouldn't necessarily wear these two together, but, uh, you know, hey, you can definitely get them both. Very different feel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we've had a lot of people ask us for stuff that they can wear to work that still matches the comfort that they know and love from our other products, but that is workplace, workplace ready. Colton. <laughs> really i swear i've seen him do exactly that i don't know why yeah but like i i've seen him do that why does colton do anything he does <laughs> i don't know anyway it's available in green and charcoal melange super comfy and f okay who wrote these this shirt is softer than a freshly pixelated kitten's fur what? <laughs> Pixelated kittens. What does that even mean? <laughs> I have no idea, but it is it is comfy. Uh, <laughs> it's sure. interesting. It, it probably would get people to keep reading, so maybe it's good. Uh, the joggers are available in two colors and two lengths, um, and the polo shirt is available in two different colors. Oh, now seems like as good a time as any to talk about LTT is hiring. Ah, uh, yes. Wait, I'm supposed to show the jobs page. And I am I'll do, also I'll do the reading. I'll do, do the, the reading. read. Okay, I'll show the jobs page. Bullet point one: writer slash video producer. Really, colon. Luke? <laughs> we're specifically looking for someone to help make the kind of videos Alex makes. I.e., we're looking for laptop expertise and or maker skills. Engineering background with expertise in SolidWorks uh, has to be SolidWorks specifically. Would be a really nice bonus as well. Also, we're looking for a data visualization specialist for the labs, basically make our graphs better. This person should have great data presentation expertise, some ability as a graphic artist, and some ability as a data analyst. Mr. Gary Key has written a message to our potential hires as well. Oh? Uh, for everyone to enjoy. It's uh, down on the bottom. Of what? Do you want to just read Where? it at this point? Oh. I was looking at the uh, wrong screen. If you believe, you're... Uh, whoa. <laughs> this will be your boss. Presentation <laughs> specialist. What? And I, for, huh? If you can read it. Yeah, I got the job. Uh, then we want you for the... Then we want you for the labs. Okay. With an eye for details. <laughs> I got there. The an eye for details took me a second. How are we hiring so many things right now? What is a project manager float plane, Luke? Huh? What's a project manager? What is this? It's, it's a proje projector man and manager. Okay. You do, thanks, Gary Key. Yeah, no uh, worries. Okay. Back we're we're closing the back end one. I finished writing that contract today. Accounting just needs to sign it off. We're closing that position. Let's go. Um, the project manager one is probably going to go away as well. Oh, okay. Um, and, but not because I found someone, just because... It's not really working. You give up. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, hey, I, pff, there's, there's time, I guess. <laughs> there is going to be probably, we're looking through current applicants, uh, but if the that doesn't work out, um, we might be making another posting for a front-end position for Floatplane as well. All right. So, yeah. How are we still? Okay, we need to take a little break at some Mine point. Mine are pre-budgeted. And have been budgeted for a while. I know, I know. Mine are, mine I are know. good. Leave mine alone. I know. I need mine. Why don't we do a couple of merge messages? Dan, hit us. Sure thing. Hello, L L N D. With the end uh, or near the end of Moore's Law, how do you expect to see continued generational performance improvement as the transistors can no longer shrink? Um, you know, I just I I. It seems impossible. But they keep doing it. Yeah, they keep finding some lever to turn, some wheel to crank. Yeah. IPC improvements. Uh, yeah. Like there's there's things well, that... Well, 3D stacking. Oh, yeah. Looks like it is going That's to be one. huge. Uh, chiplets look like they are going to be huge. Like we not... might find other ways 
to expand the amount that you're using, yeah, not like, necessarily the amount we can fit in a certain area. Like, uh, okay, technology like in Intel's Foveros chip, where they've got, I, I forget, it's like three or four different manufacturing processes and all these buses that are communicating with each other on this like giant package. Um, stuff like stuff like that is going to make its way to consumer technology or to consumer electronics at some point and could be a game changer i mean the way that the way that the way that ai is changing the game too is massive i think that we are super mad about nvidia giving us underpowered gaming chips at a price that isn't palatable right now but when we look back, so 10 years from now, when we're playing photorealistic games at you know 300 frames per second or whatever on chips that fundamentally haven't changed nearly as much as the 10 years prior, we're going to be looking at it going, wow, they were way ahead. And that was early teething pain for what was ultimately going to be the future. Um, I mean, just just looking at the way that uh, man, I was I was looking at um, oh this new Photoshop feature, where you basically just give it an image and then just tell it like, oh yeah, I want a lake in the middle, yeah, and I want a car and I want a cloud yeah. that's shaped like the car. You saw the same article I did. I yeah, think. I was I meant to send it to our our thumbnail designer, but I forgot. Yeah, um, I'm sure they're already. Aware. So Photoshop just has generative AI built in, and if we're doing that in Photoshop now then give it a little bit more time and we'll be doing that in real time in games. You know, you'll be able to mod a game by simply typing in a prompt. Uh, okay, I want to play Super Mario World, but all of the all of the Koopas are Man, procedurally generated games are going to be a are whole little new little faces with mustaches. Ball of wax. Like that's insane. I don't think I've even thought about that before. Yeah. Procedurally generated games don't even have to pre-make the assets. Yeah, like, it's just like I want to play Half Life Two, but all the opponents are donkeys, and you know what? It's not going to be perfect, but it's going to get pretty good. You can like you can hugely simplify the modding scene for certain things. You know when they make like they made all the dragons in Skyrim into Thomas the Tank Engine or whatever. I didn't see that, but I love it. That's it's my great. favorite. It's, it's, oh, yeah. it's a fantastic Amazing. mod. They even choo, like choo. When, yeah when they fly <laughs> when they fly in you normally hear the dragon roar they they, they have a train horn <laughs> it's very good it's very good um, but you could do stuff like that using this instead oh did you find it <laughs> oh, do you want do you want sound no no I okay. don't think sound will be necessary entirely so it's gonna land on top of the tower that you're looking at right oh, now spoilers if you haven't oh come on it's Skyrim. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, see it, you see it flying around in the background? It's going to slam down. Boom! <laughs> There's people who would, uh, they, they'd be like arachnophobic or whatever. So they would replace all the spiders in the game with like teddy bears or, or whatever else, too. Right. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that sort of thing is only going to get easier. Oh, so good. Which is great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man that and would be you know what would be really interesting oh man i wonder if we'll get to the point you know how we've been waiting for uh or i have whatever um for for sky oblivion and more oblivion or yeah. more more skywind sorry there yeah. we go which are it's morrowind and oblivion rebuilt in skyrim's skyrim. engine yeah um with really high resolution textures and all this other yeah. kind of stuff because you can do some pretty cool things in skyrim's engine even though it's pretty old um i think we're going to get to a certain point eventually where because of because like yeah it's going to have some issues doing this kind of stuff out of nowhere creativity problems all that kind of stuff it pulls yep. from something whatever but you might be able to go like okay here's a game Here's all the information I have, all the local files, all that kind of stuff. I want you to recreate this using UE5 or whatever. I want you to recreate this using this other thing. Oh, I see what you mean. Because it's pretty good at like translating, yeah. right? Even stuff like RTX Remix. Uh, you know, okay. Uh, a, just AI replace all the light sources with real point light sources. Um, yeah. And then you'll have to go in and tweak it. You'll still yep. have oh, to yeah. be... 
a graphic designer or a game designer or whatever still else. Still take work. But man, yeah, it's like it's like the the generative AI in in Photoshop, right? It's not replacing artists. Yeah, we still need an artist to do that. We need all the same people to do all the same stuff. It just yeah. makes their job easier. Well, more realistically, it makes it so they have to do more of it. But yeah, because yeah. that's what working here is like. <laughs> There's always going to be stuff to do. That is never a concern. <laughs> I mean, that's what that's what work is like, Luke. Yeah. I I don't make the freaking. I I was reading a uh, I was I was reading an article. Uh, they they surveyed. I wasn't saying of, that in a bad way. To be clear, uh, they surveyed a bunch of Gen Z and millennial people who have sort of pioneered this concept of it's called lying flat in China or quiet quitting in North America. Of you know the their their top priorities being you know, work-life balance as opposed to all these other things. And then when they continue asking them questions, they're like, okay, right. But do, is that a, is that a thing? And they're like, no, is, no, is, actually I have a second job oh, hustling because you get bored. The, the, well, no, no, it's just inflation's out oh, of control. Yeah. It, yeah. Like it's, it's not actually feasible. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like That's you have to, point. you have to, you have to bust your butt. And so it's this sort of aspirational thing. I, I don't know. It's uh, it's a it's a big it's a big challenge. It's one of those things where I I feel like we we do I think a pretty good job of trying to make it so that people don't have to work outside their forty hours. Um, but it's tough right now. By and large, the way the world's going right now, it's it's not like that. Um, it's, it has shifted from, uh, from, a from an employee's market to an employer's market, like looking at what's going on with the big tech firms and the way that they're bringing everyone back to office, cutting perks, laying off th literally thousands, sometimes tens of thousands of staff. I watched a video recently of a, a certain excessively rich person and it was like, uh, how much is a banana if we no something else <laughs> that okay. one was really funny that was really funny very funny but no they were like okay if we take this person's net wealth in single american dollar bills so like one u.s dollar because i know a lot of other countries don't have that so making sure you know yeah. um and we stacked it like horizontally and tried to wrap around the world yeah how many like times? how far would we get and you single u.s dollar bills like like the width almost yeah Pressed against each other. Right. Okay. You almost make it the whole way around the world. Wow. And it's just like, does this make any sense? Like, I, I don't know. Anyways, sorry. We'll get back on the tech topics. Oh, uh, <sighs> no, I think we're supposed to actually do a couple more merch messages. <laughs> uh, give us a merch message anyway. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Give us a merch okay. message. Yeah. Baby. This one's from Jordan. What's the longest you have ever worked in one shift? <laughs> Oh, I mean, there was... I knew that would get a giggle from Luke. Peanut butter crackers. 700 <laughs> what? series launch. Yeah. 700 series launch. I'm pretty sure I was awake for like four days. See, I don't know. I've done some pretty... I've done some pretty dumb stuff, too. It depends on how we define work. Like, we didn't used to classify sitting on a plane as work, but yeah. we apparently do now. Um, yeah, it's, for... it's, it's complicated. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's complicated. Yeah. Um, but I remember when David and I and oh, someone from the business team came with us. I can't remember. But we went to and from Germany in like 30 hours, like doorstep to doorstep. I remember this, yeah. So that wasn't technically one shift, but good gravy. Uh, was that ever intense? Because that's like a, an 11-hour flight or something like that, or like nine-hour flight. I can't remember exactly how long it is. We shot a video on the other side. Like we, Like we worked. And then we were back. Um, those those touch and go trips can be pretty exhausting. Actually. Yeah. 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 I think that trip to Germany was probably my worst. The worst recently was what we went through with the uh, the channel hijacking, though. I think it hasn't been that bad in a while. We try. We actually try. People are constantly. Why do you have so many people on staff? Because we're trying. Because we are actually we're trying. trying. Yeah. <laughs> it's not always easy. I enjoyed because, that one. Because See, we, this is my, this is, I'm broken. And this, <laughs> and this is my problem. Because you're like talking about how that's a victory. But for me, those are all like my favorite memories. Yeah. But I then know. I have to remember 
that that's not normal. That's not realistic. So, so I, yeah. Or that. Yeah. It's because not I will break. So I have to like, but I enjoy those. So I kind of like it when it happens sometimes. Yeah. But I don't like it. Probably shouldn't happen too often. Or I'll. I'll I'm old now. I can't do that all the time. But I do like those. You're moments. old. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm starting to feel it. The recovery time from things is getting long. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It doesn't get better. That's the main thing that I'm noticing. I'm not, not a lot else is really that you know. But if I if I go too far, and oh, yeah. it's like okay, I need to rest. I'll be like, oh, I'll be good in like a day, and then it's like a week passes, and I'm like, I'm still feeling it. Yep. Yep. It's, <sighs> yeah. It's, it's not. It's not going to get better from yeah. here on out. I'll tell you that much. Yep. Thirties rough. Thirty fives worse. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I had my my badminton training session last night. Uh, my my Thursday night session. Uh, I didn't message you this because Luke was messaging me the week prior. I think telling me how much water he drank at one of his things. So in two hours and twenty minutes, I drank two and a half of these. That is 100 ounces of water. And let me put it this Damn. way. I didn't go pee. <laughs> I am f***ing annihilated right now. Like, yeah. I am so sore and so tired. We're, we, I don't know what he was trying to do to me. I told him. I was like, David, I'm going to Taiwan to play badminton every day and cover a trade show. Why are we doing all smash practice today? <laughs> I, we, we've been planning this video for a long time and things just keep coming up, but we'll, we will do it where we're going to go to the gym. And I, I at no point in time have actually known what the like point was or what we're like actually supposed to do. So I've had, I've just in my head, I've had these various ideas for like a while, just different, like, ah, maybe we'll do this. Maybe we'll do that. And then eventually I was like, you know, I was hoping this was going to be a recurring thing and it's not going to be. So I'm just going to like hurt them. What? I'm just going to make it so hard that like he's just going to wake up the next day and not be able to move. And then I was like, I like enjoyed this idea. And then I was like, no, I can't because like we're too old now. If we were back when we first started doing this, that would have probably been fine. Yeah. If this was 10 years ago, we probably would have both been fine. But now if I do that, it's like actually going to be a problem and you'd probably make me do it with you so we'd both just be wrecked for like ever <laughs> and I'm like okay well i can't do that so back to the drawing board it's like oh <laughs> man all right <sighs> all right why don't we jump into our next topic here no one wants to buy the rtx 4060 ti in spite of my best efforts <laughs> after taking a back alley deal from nvidia to promote their new gpu slash S. <laughs> NVIDIA's new RTX 4060 Ti has been met with low consumer interest. Many retailers only ordered a few cards per store, and in some areas, especially Europe, they are already offering the cards for $10 to $25 below the recommended retail price. And this is probably because in Europe, the recommended retail prices are particularly brutal because NVIDIA apparently doesn't attend the XE.com school of how currency conversion works. Um, at the same time, though, NVIDIA's market valuation increased by 30%. Yeah. 30%. Percent their stock went up in the last two days or something like that due to high demand for LLM chips. So uh, large language model chips, well, like machine learning chips. Uh, NVIDIA don't give a f about gamers anymore. It's so annoying because like, yeah, they had crypto stuff and then that sort of died. And we, and were, we were like, were yeah, like, come yes. back to us. Come crawling back, baby. And they're back for like what not even a year and then they're like oh new wave to ride let's go like oh come on <sighs> oh well anyway amd of course dropped prices on the 7600 xt down to 269 only 36 hours before launch okay i'd actually like to talk about that we had a whole shtick for that video where the intro was going to be AMD, I'd be happy to help you learn how to benchmark GPUs so that you can price your cards appropriately. And we actually left in part of it. And then we kind of went you know, record scratch. <laughs> uh, AMD uh, changed the price of the card. 
if all I, I don't want us to get too good guy AMD about them bringing this card out at a price that is somewhat reasonable. Because <laughs> it's somewhat reasonable. Because, yeah, A, it's only somewhat reasonable. Yeah. It's in line with the rest of their lineup, which they did, you know, get aggressive on a little bit, but that's only to, you know, deal with the fact that GPU demand is apparently like at a historic low right now or something like that. Like this is not out of the goodness of their hearts. And B, they only did it at the last second. Like very last second. Changing the price of a GPU a day and a half before its its public launch is a colossal undertaking because they have to basically redo all the contracts that they have with their board partners, right? They have to they, they have to go and do like a whole bunch of paperwork and re- I, mean, I mean I imagine the account, accounting department would absolutely hate this, right? Um, and I want us to not lose track of the fact that if they were able to price it at 269 36 hours from launch they could have priced it at 269 36 days from launch there is nothing about the cost of this card that necessitated the 299 price that they originally yeah. announced to the press nothing clearly <laughs> and it was only due to some kind of probably intense pressure that they would have made a last minute change like this. So I'm, I'm annoyed. I find it extremely disrespectful. They're like when these good guy by association because the other guy's worse. Yeah. Well, it's more just like they could have just done this. They could have, they could have been, you know, pro consumer. They could have cared about consumer value in the first place. And they could have had it at a good price, but they didn't. There's clearly a lot of internal forces at AMD that wanted this card to be priced as high as the market could possibly bear. And it was only at the last second that they ultimately made the decision to back down. Um, And it's extremely disrespectful to everyone else who's involved in the launch of a product like this, including media partners. And I know there's going to be the people out there whose takes, you know what? Yeah, maybe I will just start shadow banning because they're phenomenally stupid. But whose takes on this are going to be, oh, wow, complaining about free GPUs. Do you think I need a 7600 XT? Do you think that meaningfully changes my life? Um, th- this is, this is our, our job is to make these reviews so that people know what to buy. That's, that's the whole point. And then the way that that symbiotic relationship works with the manufacturers is if they make a good product, then as long as we are independent and trusted, that will dramatically improve their sales. And the second we're not independent and trusted, it will have no impact whatsoever. So it's in their interest to support an independent media, right? Um, and so when they don't give us the tools to do our jobs properly, well, it's disrespectful to us. And it's also disrespectful to you guys. There was a not insignificant probability that if any outlet, you know, had a family emergency or something like that, they wouldn't be able to get the proper message out to their viewers. Now, the good news is that for any written outlet, a price change is theoretically pretty easy to adjust. You just kind of go, oh, okay, uh, control H, 299, uh, 269, replace. But because it so dramatically changed the value proposition of this card, which is a value tier card, I wouldn't say budget, but definitely it's it's about the value. You're not buying a 7600 XT because you're going for the utmost in performance. You want bang for the buck, right? And it, it changed... It changed the angle of the video a lot. And for video, that's even harder to adjust because you need to change the script, then you need to reshoot it. We actually had to fully reshoot that video. The only reason that we reused some of our original shoot was because I just kind of thought it was funny to have my outfit change sporadically throughout (laughs) throughout the the video. yeah, yeah, okay. Oh, oh okay, this is great. Uh, in our in our notes here, it says communication of the drop was scattered and some reviews did actually go up based on the original price, which is not a, a proper service to, to you, the viewer. 
Uh, AMD's board partners seem to have stuck with the 270 price, with the exception of the ROG Strix OC edition at $340. Um, and then Best Buy has made the interesting choice to price multiple models of the 7600 at 380 and that's probably because they haven't actually gotten written, signed confirmation of any kind of rebates that they might be getting on these cards that they probably got allocation of completely sight unseen, not knowing what the pricing was, or they got the original pricing only for it to change later. Uh, Intel apparently, though, took the opportunity to slash the A750 to $199. That's actually um, a pretty interesting price. AV1 encoding, solid 1080p performance. And with being able to stream, like, there's a very strong argument at that price for streamers grabbing that just as their, their streaming card. Yeah, 200 bucks. Man, that's a lot of hardware for 200 bucks. Meanwhile, meanwhile, Nvidia wants $100 for just 8 gigs of the RAM on that card. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And if it doesn't sell, man, I just don't think they're going to give any Fs. They're yeah. so busy. The LLM cards, whatever. They're Who so cares? busy selling every wafer they can book at TSMC right now. Yeah. Like, oh, it's like not performing AI as well. No, just don't book more time. Yeah, who cares? Yeah, whatever. Just shift production to to, to Teslas or whatever. Yeah. Or a, a whatever they, they call uh, it these days. Yeah. I think the Tesla branding is gone, but... Was it A4000? Is that right? Uh, no, I think it's, uh, I think it's A6000 or something sure. like that. I, 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 can't, I can't remember anymore because it seems like they have intentionally made their product stack just completely it's unintuitive. So yeah. Why did they take away the Quadro name? It was so good. Yeah, and then they had like two different generations of workstation card that have the same model. The only like, thing the that they did that I didn't them. like was they would have like weird like Best Buy exclusive generations and then skip over them for everybody else. That was the only thing. Basically, all the rest of it was fine. Just leave it alone. Oh, now now Nvidia's naming is, is yeah. A now it's a mess. And so is AMD's for that matter. I I I have gained a renewed interest in AMD's cards because they're just a killer value right now. From about a hundred and eighty dollars up to realistically like four hundred and fifty five hundred bucks. And so as part of that scrapyard GPU war thing, where I was trying to get the the best bang for the buck GPU for around the price of a forty sixty Ti at retail. Uh, I ended up doing a bunch of research into AMD cards that I hadn't really paid much attention to. Before. Their product stack is a mess. They have a 6600, a 6600 XT, and then they have a 6650 XT. But then in the 7000 generation, they're not doing 50s. They're doing XT X for the more better one. And I'm just, I'm looking at this going, what the... What the hell is going on? Sometimes you have an XT, sometimes you have a 50, sometimes the XT is a huge jump, sometimes the 50 is a big jump, but they're both XTs. I cannot wait for the lab to just have a database where I can just go, okay, get that game at that resolution and just, just show me all of them. Please. Be lab, I'm so ready. I, I, haven't, I haven't told them yet. But one of the things that I would like for us to do, never mind GPU Concern. reviews, uh, one of the things that I would like for them to do is have enough test benches oh, yeah. that we can I run in, that we can run in parallel, and we can basically like once a year, maybe twice a year, if we can make it automated enough, we just throw every card back on, run it with the latest drivers, and just have this database be up to date. So you can just compare functionally anything with a PCIe slot. I have I have vaguely mentioned this, and I saw hearts shatter. Um, but I'm sure we'll get there eventually. I think it'll. I, th I just think it'll take a long time. They just need more test benches. I mean, if it <sighs> if it gets as simple as we can use machine vision to to, to set up the infrastructure much behind everything. all that is going to be like pretty intense. Yeah, well, but that well, sounds like videos to me. <laughs> like I said, it's very. I I, be, I believe we can get there, um, but I don't expect it soon. That's all I'm saying. They got they got a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of moving parts in that their lab. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm excited, man. It's gonna be it's gonna be awesome. It's I had someone ask in Floatplane Chat today if we would make content about cards like pretty deep into their life cycle, talking about their performance on new drivers. And I was I, like, 
I don't think that that's something that you're going to see very often. I don't think the content on LTT, but I think that's something where the lab could end up digging up, you know, cool outliers. Like, man, how, how would we train it to look for, you know, weird anomalies? Like, you know, hey, flag it for us if this card has increased in performance I was say, by if more we, than 20%. If we've or, tested it in the past, yeah, that would help a lot. Because then if a test is like way outside of expected change, then we would know. Yeah, I guess so. And we're going to have to have like weekly meetings with the lab that kind of like, okay, what have you tested? What What's interesting? Um, I had a meeting with James today about sort of what our, what our channel strategy is is going to look like going forward and it's 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 kind of like um content kind of rolls down a hill sort of thing so ltt started out as simple basic like reading the packaging unboxings essentially and then it turned into more like testing and reviews and then it turned into bigger projects and became very personality driven and now it's sort of reached it's like so, a show. Yeah, I would say it's it's reached kind of an end game as far as that goes. And then we identified that there was this content gap that we were no longer filling. And we went, oh, okay, how about Short Circuit then? Uh, Short Circuit will now do the, the simple, easy, cheapo unbox. Okay, no, we're going to start adding data to Short Circuit. Let's make that more like a review. Okay, but then what about these simple unboxings? Well, you know what? We're going to have data for those too, and then we're going to do these category-specific channels. I think you guys might be disappointed when you see the production values of these oh yeah in, if we're making a video vertical, on every single power supply that ever exists it might just be hands unboxing some very basic b-roll we might have to find a way to essentially cut these with ai and then have an editor go in and fix there are ai video editing tools like it, yeah. it might be pretty basic but if our if our goal is to you know have a video that could belong on every single product page on Newegg or something like that in the longer term here. Uh, realistically, how how much um, how much more is there going to be for us to say about the thirteen five hundred or the thirteen four hundred Core i five? I man, I'm going to be really interested to see what we'll be able to do with a labs data sheet a large language model, and a writer to kind of go in and clean it up. It's going to need that. Yeah. Um, where we basically just go, okay, feed the LLM all the performance data and specs of this product and everything within $50 of it on either side and uh, you know the top tier from that generation. What would it spit out? Would it say, compared to AMD's whatever, it's like this, and that's still 30% worse than the best Intel has to offer, but it, like, if we, if we gave it enough samples, like, if we wrote them manually to start and then fed that to it, would it be able to, to generate anything usable? I, I don't even know. What could be kind of interesting is, eventually, if we have, like, site analytic, like, user, how people use the lab's website, analytics that are good we could use that to fuel content direction Ooh. like if we start noticing a ton of people start comparing some certain cards or whatever we could be like hmm, maybe content time that's pretty cool and do stuff like that okay i'm liking that not yet not yet it's gonna take time yeah that's fine we've got time we've got money speaking of which lttstore.com yeah let's and go. speaking of which our sponsors and the that. show is brought to you today by vessi are you thinking of stepping down like Linus? <laughs> well, instead of stepping down, you should step up with Vessi's Boardwalk Slip-On Sneakers. Thanks, Dennis. With a classic design, Vessi ensures you'll be looking stylish all year round. Their patented Dymatex technology keeps their shoes breathable and lightweight. And when the rain does start to fall, you'll surely appreciate their claim of 100% waterproof protection. Check out the Vessi Boardwalk and other styles at Vessi.com slash Linus Tech Tips and use code LTT to get 15% off your entire order. The show is also brought to you by SignalWire. Are you tired of slogging through complex code just to implement SMS, voice, or video capabilities into your projects? 
Well, SignalWire makes your life easier by adding essential communications capabilities to your applications without needing a computer science degree. SignalWire was created by the team behind FreeSwitch, one of the world's largest open source communication platforms, and it makes it simple to add in features like interactive voice menus, call routing, speech recognition, and more. And if you're ever stuck, they provide 24-7 US-based support. Get a $25 credit with code WAN25 when you sign up at signalwire.com slash WAN. You can use this credit to purchase phone numbers, build an interactive voice response, register messaging campaigns, or route phone numbers to your personal phone. The show is also brought to you by, oh, this is a super cool monitor. I am actually considering, okay, I'll read the talking points at some point, but I'm pretty close to swapping out my 120 hertz 16 by 9 for this thing at home. I've had it in on my test bench in the garage ever since we did the review and every time i'm out there i'm just like yeah i should just bring this inside <laughs> and it's 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 dumb little things like okay it's some dumb not dumb little things being able to adjust the angle is super cool um it's 240 hertz instead of 120 like the one that i'm using or it's either 120 or 144. Uh, anyway it's a little smoother and a big one is that it would mean that if i want to start streaming again more regularly my camera could be in a way better position. Yeah. A big, big 16 by 9 monitor is actually not that great for webcam positioning. Yeah. Anyway, sorry, talking points, blah, blah, 45 inch, 1,000 nit peak brightness, three-year warranty with burn-in protection, and uh, you can check it out at the link in the video description. Uh, okay, that's not creepy at all. <laughs> cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Hey Dan. I'm happy hey, the Dan. Dan's spots are back. Hey Dan. We don't know what to do. Tell us what to do. Tell us what to do. Three oh. merch messages. Okay, well then why didn't you just read a merch message? Yeah. Dan. Yeah. It's gonna be less effective trying to yell at it when we're in Taiwan. Yeah, that's true. Oh yeah, that's we're true. gonna next week is gonna be the Taiwan show. <laughs> <laughs> why didn't I think of that? Oh, uh. Uh, yeah, okay, fine. Uh, we'll do some merch messages, if you insist. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, another Dan has a question for the talent. Uh, LTX is coming soon, and with the whale LAN, I would like to hear your tips for traveling with LAN gear. Oh, man, take I mean... Take the GPU out. Yeah, take the GPU out. Never, never put your tower down below if you can avoid it. It's a strong down argument below? for... Yeah, like in the luggage check. Like if you can if you can small form factor yeah. it and bring your computer with you, oh man, I, I would think try. About flying. But at the Oof. very least, take your GPU out of the system, pack it up with stuff. We did a video. I forgot about this. Um, Linus, how to pack your PC? Here, hold on a second. How to not smash your PC? Gaming rig packing and moving guide. This was. This must have been more than three years ago. Hold on just a gosh darn second here. What's the exact date on this? Yeah, July 1st, 2019. This was in the lead up to LTX the last time we did it. Look at this hair. Um, <laughs> and the whole idea was that we were going to be doing a big LAN and we wanted people's computers to make it safely. So we show you guys all these ways that you can pack up your computer safely. Oh, yeah. This stuff is really good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's a, that's a whole video that only got a million views. But hey, I think we just got a nice little bump from the 500 people who are coming to Whale Land. Yay. Small bump. Little yes. bump. All right. It hit counts. me, Dan. DLL, with how much you guys work, WAN show lasting four to five hours, how do you manage a good work slash family balance? Um, well, I'm supposed to be home already so that I can spend a bit of time with my wife um, before I go to the airport. What time's our flight? 2 a.m. 2 a.m. So I fly out in six hours. It takes quite a while to get there. Um, it's been a challenge. Yep. Uh, but but I schedule time for family. Uh, so every every week I, um, I go to my daughter's martial arts class with them. So I help participate in the class. Um, also, I do badminton training with my kids. Like, I, I'll play with them. 
um, you know, whether it's like family game night or board games or movie night or whatever else, you know, we make sure that we do those things at least a couple times a week. We went swimming on the weekend. Like you just have to schedule it, I think, is, is the typical response you'll hear from busy people. Get it on the schedule. Um, and the funny thing about it is that like my parents were super busy, but I didn't really think about it until I became a parent. Like you, you remember like, oh yeah, we would go to, you know, Playland or we would do this or we would do that. And you think back and you go, yeah, we did that like four times. Um, the kids' memories are funny. And I, th I think my kids think I spend a lot of time with them actually. So it's, it's good. <laughs> you know, bedtime stories, making sure that you kind of catch them at least once a day and, and do something with them. I think is really important. My life is a lot easier. Don't have kids. I do. <laughs> I am hoping to have some amount of time at home though because my birds have been away all week have i told you this at all no okay so when i was in houston doing one of the coolest things i've ever done in my darn life um uh we boarded the birds at the vet it's pretty okay. common yeah. for people to board their birds at vets when they go away is because... it common for the vet to not bother taking care of their birds at all yeah uh so there's a continuation of that story oh they have mites your birds have mites that they got are you sure? At the vet. Okay, I shouldn't joke. I'm, I mean, I'm too pissed to find it funny. It was pretty good, but yeah. I'm, I'm very angry right now, so it didn't it didn't. Seriously? Land. They have vet mites. Yeah, so we contacted the vet, and they were like, oh, yeah, so we had our second infestation of mites ever in our, like, entire history, and they're, they're, they've been around for a very long time. Yeah. Um, this is, like, the worst ever, and things are bad. Bring them back, and we'll take care of them. Uh, but scoop the blue and white one uh, was anemic and birds are you know humans are like mostly water birds yeah. are mostly air they have like no mass to them right so if it's anemic that's really bad real bad so and they took such like, good care of your birds last time so so big concern uh, and they're they're probably home right now actually so okay. I'm hoping to see them for some amount of time before we leave because I am big squishy man that wants to see little tiny borb before i go away for two weeks you're a good bird dad <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't think i could be as attached to a bird as you seem to be to your birds it helps i don't have kids yeah well i, I think it's one of those things where oh boy this is oh this is going to be a hot day we should do the next merch message as a parent i often hear people you know like dog people oh, yeah, or no, bird it's people not. talk about how much it's like kids. Oh no. And I'm just like, Nope. It's no. an animal. Yeah. You feel that way because you don't have kids. Yeah. <laughs> like I, I thought I loved cats a lot. And like, <laughs> now I'm like, Oh no, it's just a cat. <laughs> okay. I mean, I like my cats and you can care about them maybe love them a little, but it's, it's not the same. Emma and I actually have this conversation like often and I'm like, no, like they're cool. I care about them a yeah. lot. I will do a lot for them. But you only have that much energy for your dog because yeah, no, it's just a dog. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, and like dogs are cool. I, Super cool. My birds are fantastic. Yep. I love my cats. But. Um, and we went through a lot. Okay, yeah. here's the here's the fun part. You'll know how much I liked doing this. Uh, they sent us this huge PDF about like, okay, so you had mites. Um, because now we had mites in our house, right? Yeah. And we found them, my girlfriend found them, because they were crawling on the blanket. So it's not, they weren't, they're not just on the birds. They're not just oh. in the cage. Oh. They are now in our house. So it's like, this is how you deal with things now that you have mites in your house. And they're like, you will effectively never get rid of this infestation. Blah, 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 blah. Some yeah. of the reasons why are they'll get into like your couch and you can't get them out of your couch. Guess what? My response was, let's see how well. Linus can usually pin me pretty well, but this one was interesting. So we'll see. To get rid of mites? <sighs> Arson. Because um, you can't get it out of certain things. So like, well, yeah, then my you computer would just... chair is right next to the cage. They, they they sit literally right here. The couch is literally right on the other side of that. The solution to this. There's a carpet that was right beside them as well. I mean, no, it, you have to have just hauled it out immediately. Yep. Yeah. No. I there's... yeeted my couch, my computer oh chair, my and my giant carpet. Thanks, vet. So my you walk into my house and it echoes now. Right. 
Like I actually yeeted like half of the furniture that I own. And I'm wow. going to leave on this trip and come back and have no computer chair. Sick. I have like a dining room chair. Like I'll be fine. But Sick. like. What a pain in the butt. Oh my God. I'm so annoyed. Get Anyways. It? <laughs> pain in the. Ah, good one. <laughs> okay. I get a, I get a courtesy <laughs> chuckle for that one. This is great. Can't I believe the vest didn't tell you, bro, bro. I, I'm, I, I think, I we think I'm going to start implementing my on. shadow banning. Mm. Uh, got a got a Twitch message. Loving a self reproduction of yourself is the height of hubris. <laughs> that is actually not what a kid is. <laughs> You're a fucking idiot. Miniature Linus clones. <laughs> like actually, <laughs> like actually, your brain is bad. <laughs> Oh. It's like I, you can't have that bad of a take because your your brain couldn't possibly get there from a place of being remotely functional um without it actually being real. Like that's that's kind of how it works. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Next man. merch message is that how many more? Uh, please, oh, please, please, please move yeah, on, new, or new we will topic, we will not topic, have enough. You oh, got ten minutes. Yeah, okay. hit me again. Uh, eight sleep. Should we talk about that? Yeah, we gotta talk about it at some point. Oh. Some viewers were upset that Eight Sleep, who sponsored a video last week, requires a mandatory subscription. I do want to put an asterisk on here because I've talked about Eight Sleep on the show a few times about how I have one and how I like it a lot. I I'm ninety nine point nine percent sure it was not a mandatory. No, subscription No, we can when talk about mine. that. It is. Oh um, yeah. No, no when wasn't. I bought mine. Yeah back then so uh da, 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 it requires a mandatory subscription for at least a year to their premium features and it's really expensive just as a note uh to their premium features with the purchase of their temperature controlled uh mattress topper the product's super basic feature uh heating slash cooling works without the subscription there's nothing forcing users to continue to buy it after the first year at our request Eight Sleep oh. has agreed to double their discount offer from one hundred and fifty to three hundred dollars to cover the cost of the subscription, and we've let them know that we won't be working with them moving forward unless they make changes to their subscription model and commit to an open source transition. Should the company go out of business, hopefully that helps address things with you guys. I got to be honest with you: the reason that I didn't know this was a problem is because I'm using my Eight Sleep topper without a subscription because I looked at the features of the subscription and what I wanted it for, and I went, eh, not really worth it. And, and it was optional back then. And I didn't realize that you had to buy the year of subscription. Honestly, I think they could have just messaged this better. If the price was just higher, yeah. and it included it the first year of subscription. Included free bonus, like that's, exactly. Then I don't think anybody would have, they, people would have said it was expensive, but they wouldn't yeah. have called it you know, evil or predatory or whatever else. Um, so anyway. it is really expensive. It, with, without, with or without the subscription, whatever, it is very expensive. Yeah, it's very expensive. Yeah. But hey, thanks 8Sleep for dealing with it in terms of how the discount code works. It's cool that they did that. Um, and hopefully these guys will make a commitment to ensure that these things don't turn into, you know, just 35 pounds of just e-waste yeah. um, if the company were to ever go out of business with that said given how much their subscription costs i think it'd be a real challenge for them to go out of business um but as expensive as it is like i like the product and a, a lot of people were posting misinformation too though they were saying that without the subscription you can't use the app that is not I true that's correct yeah. um i do it not just have, doesn't do autopilot which is the auto adjusting feature right i don't have a subscription can my you, phone is almost dead so you can barely see yeah, my battery see saver it. screen or whatever but this is my this is my dashboard that's rough my you temp dial my temp dial i get that almost every day as well <laughs> definitely works uh, oh oh my sleep Pay attention score yeah. of 26 yeah. yeah well i mean what do you want from me? That's I fine. yeah, I don't sleep well. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, my temp dial works, and it will adjust throughout the night 
but it doesn't adjust based on my body temperature. So I just have to kind of dial it into what I like. And the challenge there is that if you are not in a temperature controlled space, like my, my house has climate control, right? If you're not in a temperature controlled space, then it could be a lot more important to have the automatic thing. But then presumably you aren't sense. paying for climate control. So I see why people were upset. And that's why we've gone to them and said, okay, look, here's our list of demands. Uh, but I also do see the value of the product. It's not. Eh. Oh, I've actually done pretty good lately. I've got you beat. 74. That's, wow. that's very good for me. Wow. Good job, Luke. Thank you. Uh, for, the last, uh, for the last five days, I have a sleep score of 26, Ooh. 41, 80, oh. 37, 44, and uh, I have a, a full 100 from Damn. last Sunday. Um, Damn. Yeah. That's pretty good. Man, I slept till like 1130, though. So that's, yeah, that explains that. Uh, my, my kids let me sleep in that day. What do you want to talk about next? Oh, right. We should also talk about that other sponsor snafu this week on TechWiki. Hmm? Where we had that sponsor that was like a like a neck cooler thing. Oh, I heard about this. Okay, I tried it. It's like kind of cool, pun intended. Ah, uh, but it's a Kickstarter, right, or something? Yeah. So that I didn't know. Ah. Uh, um. So I've reiterated to the team, hey, we can't really do Kickstarter Indiegogo stuff. However, the reason they let it through is not entirely stupid either. This is a company that basically uses crowdfunding campaigns as a marketing vehicle. So you know how even though we don't talk about products on Indiegogo or whatever, but I'm constantly covering Ioneo? Well, they their product development just happens anyway. Yes. And yeah. they use... That one's kinda, it's almost like marketing at that point. So this company has also got a very similar history of just releasing products via crowdfunding campaign as a marketing vehicle. So that's why they made the call. But the issue here, I think, was that they were a very rando company uh, that our viewers were not familiar with at all and therefore didn't have that trust built up at all. And so we got a fair amount of pushback on that, and rightly so. Uh, also, the talking points were stupid. And I talked to the business team about that as well. Like one of the talking points was that the fan is AI controlled. And I'm like, if your fan is AI controlled, you did it wrong because you're powering an AI processor in your in your like neck cooler that should probably be using that power for cooling your neck and just have a simple fan curve on it, right? Um, so I, I talked to them about how we can't just take silly talking points at face value. We have to make sure that we are communicating things in a way that is representative of the actual product. What does the product do? It cools your neck. It kind of feels like having like a chilly water bottle around your neck like this. You know what? I like it. Is it going to be the difference between, you know, going out in 45 Celsius heat and being immediately comfortable? I think it's, I think it's fair if, no. if it's a company without a proven track record and it's a, it's a Kickstarter Indiegogo level pre-order. I think that part's fair, but like you said, you didn't know it was that, so I don't know. So, yeah, I mean, I only, I only found out about this after it was already a controversy, but I think, you know what, things like this are going to happen more and more, and I'm just going to have to kind of get used to it. As chief vision officer, I'm probably going to end up running damage control more often as opposed to less often if part of the goal here is for me to not be like hour by hour involved in absolutely everything that this company does because it's just it's not possible anymore theoretically hopefully we have less though like for a change <clears throat> hold on what were the two controversies there was the eight, okay the eight sleep one i had something to do with but i didn't know all the details and to the business team's credit they did tell me that there was some kind of controversy around the subscription and i waved it away because i kind of went well yeah but like I don't, I don't know i use it without the subscription who cares whoops right but then this other one with the weird neck cooler thing i actually didn't know anything about it until the whole thing was done and i'm just gonna have to like get used to it i guess yeah so we're gonna make some mistakes we had this conversation Yvonne and i had this conversation yeah. today where she was talking about 
uh, I was I was talking about uh, this thing that we're implementing and and security issues around it and like who should be able to have what level of access to various things and yeah. whatnot. Um, and she was kind of just thinking out loud about how it's interesting and in some ways difficult, but in some ways good, whatever, like just kind of thinking out loud about the idea that it's not always just Linus of Vaughn run everything all the time anymore. It's weird. We can't. Yeah. It's not possible. Nope. So it's like a, it's brought out like almost 120 people. We added like two more people on Monday. Like what? Yeah. The the Monday morning meeting like always has a picture in it these days. Like always. Well, you're not helping. No. Mine were all pre-approved, bro. Mine were all <laughs> pre-approved. Like last year. <laughs> I don't deny it. <laughs> Should we talk about the invisible PC setup? Uh, yes. 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 Invisible mouse. <laughs> invisible keyboard. Hologram monitor. This channel is actually amazing. This is the only thing I've seen, but it was awesome. And I... Oh, no, he did this, like, super tiny one, too, and specifically called me out to beat it. Oh, and God. I was like, I can't. I, what am I going to do? You've taken this to completely <laughs> the end game. You have gone too far. <laughs> um, yeah, this was sick. I actually didn't even know. That's kind of funny. I didn't know this was going to be in the dock. I watched like a sh a short, I think, on it, and then was like, "Man, I wish I could see the whole thing." So now I need to watch the whole video. Okay, I see. So yeah, the the keyboard's so like is embedded keyboard. in the table, but there isn't a mouse, which yeah. is interesting because yeah, there's, he there's he, products like that. He could have used the same technology for the keyboard, but right. I actually am happy that he didn't, because there are limitations to it. Right. <laughs> Adjustable sense. Oh my goodness. This is amazing. That looks so insane. Absolutely next that gen. That looks like something from like a, a, a movie on like future tech and AI from like the early 2000s. Yeah. You know, where they fake it. But he actually did it. Yeah, you guys are going to have to watch this. Crazy. You should absolutely check it out. That's super cool. All the stuff that's embedded in here. The zero gram invisible mouse. I love the gaming memes. Fantastic. Wow. Okay, I'm going to have to... Super cool. Can we... Can we? Can people post the link to that in chat or something? Yeah, of course. Oh, I mean, I can just do it. Cool. Yeah, yeah. People are asking for the link. We'll yeah, yeah. Sure don't worry. Don't worry. I got you guys. I got you guys. Basically homeless. <laughs> Go check out the, the super tiny one as well. I got to watch more of his stuff. Because that was really yeah, that was it was awesome. one of those channels like DIY Perks where like it doesn't publish that much, um, so it's easy. Oh, I freaking to, love DIY Perks or like so it's like that. and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. yeah. Where it's just like they, they're not they're not prolific publishers like we are. But so every time they drop, it's a banger. It's a banger. It's a banger. YouTube chat. I bet it's a poor experience. That is not the point. <laughs> This is why I never look at YouTube <laughs> chat. <laughs> oh, Actual man. unwashed masses. JK, love you, YouTube uh, chat. Yeah. At least you're not as bad as Twitch chat. There you go. Boom, Rosie. <laughs> Got him. Okay. Um, uh, Rip Cortana, do we only have one, when, when after dark? We have five minutes? Okay. The National Eating Disorders Association replaced their helpline with a chat bot. They've replaced all... All hotline workers and volunteers with a chat bot four days after the workers voted to unionize. If you thought AI is not coming for my job and you worked for the National Eating Disorders Association. You no longer think that. You were objectively incorrect. This is absolutely mind-blowing. And this is the, the, the leading edge. This is the tip of the wave that's coming. The hotline workers included a handful of paid staff as well as around 200 volunteers. The employees' demands did not include pay raises. They asked for higher staffing levels and ongoing training to deal with staff burnout and ballooning wait times. Um, Neda has used the chatbot called Tessa since February of 2022. 
It is not based on ChatGPT and does not make decisions or grow. It follows predetermined pathways based on the knowledge of the yeah, researchers so is, who made it. So this is an old school chat. I, I went into this assuming it was an AI chatbot. This is an old school chatbot. Like the thing that helped you with is your that better Lego, or worse? Your Lego thing. Probably better because like, okay. So, At least it won't hallucinate? Yes. The reason why I freaked out about this was, remember when we had that conversation forever ago about the AI that convinced the dude to kill himself so yeah, he could yeah. join them or whatever? I was worried that type of stuff would happen. Um, but it, it like won't happen with this type of system. Yeah, but while many users have rated the bot as helpful, its creator has stated that it is not an adequate replacement, not a replacement. for a yeah. human-staffed helpline. Yeah, so that all sounds right. Oh, man. Helpline volunteers were asked to act as testers for the chatbot instead of providing one-on-one -on -one support to callers. 70,000 people last year. So wait, what what actually happened? Because it said they did this. They, yeah, but they've been doing this since February 2022. So did they do this back in February of 2022? Or what, what changed? No, no, they've just had it. Now it's just all that's available. So they just dropped everybody. Yeah, see you later. Wow. Um, this, this is kind of wild. The Google Play Store has suspended the app Downloader popular app for sideloading on Android TV following a DMCA takedown from several Israeli TV companies who complained that the app is capable of loading piracy websites. Yeah, that face is uh, about how you should be feeling about this right now. Downloader is essentially a combination of a web browser and file manager that allows Android TV owners to easily download files from the internet onto their device. It can display piracy websites, yes, but only to the same degree that any other web browser can display piracy websites. So they need to remove Chrome from the Play Store. Yeah. <clears throat> the specific piracy site that was noted in the complaint, Sidaro, Sidarat, I don't know, has received injunctions from Israeli and U.S. federal courts. However, it is still online and can still be accessed in Google Chrome. <laughs> yeah. Uh, prior to the takedown, Downloader had been downloaded over 5 million times. Yo, dog, I heard you like downloading, so I put a downloader in your download. It doesn't matter. Um, Google has rejected the developer's appeal to reverse the decision. It's still available on the Amazon App Store and the developer's own website, where you can sideload it, I guess. But if it's f for sideloading, can, can, can we just stop letting tech illiterate people make legal decisions about tech? Is that something we can do? Do we have that power? <sighs> then again, you let big tech be in charge of it, and they're just going to walk all over everybody anyway. It's yep. not going to be better. Yep. Uh, yep. Oh, man, that's really stupid. Like, How dumb. many points did your IQ drop just hearing this? Uh, the, what was remaining, I'll say. Um, let's move on. We don't have that much time. Yeah, fine. Do we have Japanese any time for YouTuber. more topics? Okay was arrested for posting, monetizing, and posting and monetizing copyrighted content. The 52-year-old YouTuber was accused of uploading and monetizing a playthrough of the visual novel Steins Gate, My Darling's Embrace, a romantic comedy dating sim without permission from the developer. They had likewise posted videos that contained footage from anime series. Uh, these were not full episodes. They were narrated summaries condensing the material, which is a popular video genre in Japan. A primary point of contention was the relatively long duration of the videos and the fact that they contained the game's ending, meaning that they might act as a replacement for the original material. Seriously? Arrested. Bad precedent. Yeah. And this kind of seems to explain why Nintendo doesn't understand how the entire rest of the world views fair use. Because my understanding is fair use like kind of doesn't really exist there. Is that... Yeah, like at I, least not in the same way that it does here. I have no idea, but I don't think so. I have also heard some pretty intense arguments against people streaming or making let's plays or whatever of visual novels specifically. Is that what this was? Yeah, I was reading some. Yeah, because oh it no, is... romantic comedy dating sim. But yeah, oh, I thought it was seems to be very story driven. Yeah, okay, so I'm going to go on a tangent, I guess, and just say for visual novels specifically, because this is a thing on like Steam and stuff, people have been pretty against it because 
you're basically live streaming, flipping the pages in a book and you're showing all the pages in the book. Right. Like there, there actually is not any other content. You're not playing the game. Right. So I don't know. This one sounds like it's not that, but that's just like, I know that's a, a an argument that's going on. Yeah, Jake from The Lab, who I think lived over there for a few <laughs> years, uh, says this is an interesting one as Japanese copyright law uh, dictates that the owners need to aggressively defend their copyright, kind of like how trademark laws work here. So this may not actually be something that the developer the developer necessarily wants to do, but if they want to keep their copyright, that's it. Oh, seriously? Activision shuts down community-run servers for Legacy COD. See you later. Cease and desist yeah, from Activision. So the problem is that those community servers were the only safe way to play those games because Activision is not keeping their own servers up to date. So you can uh, something something uh, attack people through Activision servers because they're not secure. I, d I don't know all the details, but I know it's, like, bad. And they implemented their own anti-cheat, which is super cool. This is for the original Modern Warfare 2. Yeah, it's, like, way better. <sighs> a and possible cause it. for their legal action is the fact that one of X-Lab's setup guides contained a link to an illegal copy of the game. Well, that's bad. But then they should have just said, take that down. Yeah. But then I can see why they don't want to micromanage this. Yep. Yeah, I shouldn't have done that. So the Modern Warfare 2 Steam page has seen a wave of negative reviews claiming that the game can no longer be safely played. That's true. Discussion question. Is there a way for companies to defend their IP while and allowing the community to take over old games if they're no longer interested in maintaining them? Yes, there is. Sort of. Because with Supreme Commander, which is super cool, the way that FA Forever exists, that was an IP that was no longer actively being developed, whereas Call of Duty is. So it's all fine and good as long as this, you know, X Labs version of the server is good and nobody is getting infected or whatever. But as soon as they make a mistake, well, whose liability is that? Yeah. But then you shouldn't, it should be, uh, yeah, this gets it's a tough. messy topic. It's hairy. But they should not, ugh. there should be some form of recourse for them selling old games at full fat price that are unplayable safely. Well, yeah. For massively extended periods of time. I think you get like three bucks in your class action uh, payout. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Just never matters. And YouTube killed stories. I am never getting a stories function on my foldable device because YouTube <laughs> turned off the feature or is turning it off June 26th. That is the last date, and apparently it's because almost no one uses them. I mean, they got a lot of views um, back when, you know, they were a thing, but they want people to use community posts, which appear to be gaining traction, and upload shorts. So there you have it. I'm never getting stories, and I guess that's okay, because it didn't really matter, except that there were some really cool things you could do with stories, like replying to comments with a story. Sometimes it's not convenient to type out a thing on my phone, and I'd like to just... I had pitched to them, hey, how about expanding stories so that it's a feature that exists more like in the comments under a video? So, uh, you know, a, a comment that got a lot of upvotes, I'd be able to just click a button in my creator app and record a quick response to it, and it could just live there. Like, there are absolutely cool ways that you could use stories and i think that youtube is throwing the baby out with the back bathwater here a little bit but hey that's the google way let's create two different kinds of short video and they'll they'll, they'll compete against each other but one of them is monetizable so that one's gonna not win. definitely the one that's gonna win yeah, yeah go the <laughs> team the number of times that they assured me that they were probably going to be merged and that stories wasn't going away and that they were definitely bringing... The number of YouTube employees who have told me soon for that feature on my phone is at least three. <laughs> Not going to name them. It doesn't matter. It's over. But it's at least three and you know who you are. <laughs> uh, the last thing I want to talk about is our 45,000 watt fan. Okay. Think about okay. that number. Yeah, no, I know. 45,000 <laughs> watts. Yeah, I've seen it. Did you see it in operation? No. How it's long was it in operation? Scary. 
probably a total of about 10, 15 minutes. Oh, wow. Because that's as long as we can power it for. Yeah. It, it, is, it actually draws so much power <clears throat> that we could not safely power it with the entire output of the transformer in that unit. That's so insane. <laughs> Just like, what the It heck? generates so much thrust that it could almost hover with me sitting on it. <laughs> wow. Um, it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun video. Do you know what they're used for? I don't know. Oh, we probably should have talked about that. <laughs> uh whoops. <laughs> okay. Well, maybe okay, they have a bigger one. So maybe oh, we'll talk about God. what they're for in the sequel. <laughs> okay. But we cool a computer with it. Obviously. <laughs> yeah. I am genuinely interested to see what happens to the components or what you guys did to make it so that things wouldn't happen to them. Yeah, Alex. Either one of those. Alex and Kyle were involved, so you know it's oh, going to sure be it's like awesome. completely stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm excited. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Time for Wancho After Dark. Pew. Which Pew. is not that dark anymore. Because we had some feedback. When, see, we listen sometimes. When after slightly darker. Yeah. It's like barely even noticeable. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's all right. pretty good. Yeah, that's okay. Good job, Dan. You can tell. Now that was really dark when he walked right in front of the camera. I rem yeah, remember when Dan used that? to remember when Dan used to crawl used under to the duck. camera and stuff and give it. Oh, his I used to have, his I used manners. to have production gone. standards, and they just we broke him. Throw him away. I don't want to comb my hair anymore. Okay, uh, mer <laughs> merch messages, I guess. All right, cool. Uh, sure. Uh, greetings from Quebec. Since the warranty of my so. Z Fold 3 is now over, I'm afraid to break it. What would you suggest, as a user, to keep it as long as possible? P.S. When, uh, ABC of Gaming in French. Uh, okay. So, what would you suggest to keep as long as possible? I mean, be careful with it. Um... As for ABCs of gaming in French, my French, not good enough. Um, I mean, maybe we could try and hire a translator. Man, that would, be a, that would be a very difficult thing to translate and maintain the meter. Oh, and yeah, because it, like, it rhymes. rhymes and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually pretty rough. And, like, there are songs that have been successfully translated from English to French and vice versa. I think that book would be really challenging, having written the English one. Especially, it's almost a whole other book. Well, it also just contains like technical terminology for which the literal direct translation is just that word. <laughs> but like, en français, like with a French accent. So I, sorry. <laughs> what, a, AJ, one of our legitimately actually like francophone um, team members, B. Legitimately, do we have anyone else? There? Oh, I, yeah. oh no, there's um, multiple. There's uh, there's other um, A prime, A -prime other Demo. Alex. I think that's it. Yeah, I think it's A prime and Demo. Yeah. Okay. All right. Never mind. Yeah. Um. Anyway, no. Sorry, <laughs> Antoine. This. Oh yeah, yeah. He he must speak French. So four, I think. I don't know. Oh, uh, pfft, David speaks French. Ah, uh, Monsieur Gautier. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, see, you'd think I would, but no. Lafreniere. <laughs> Not even a little. No. He doesn't even know what I just said. <laughs> no, I do. I do. Uh, I speak French and then my last name. Okay. I know that much. That's actually like brushing on the limit. <laughs> I know soda mousse. Okay. Because it's on packages. Okay. That's why. There's no other reason. Wait, like cream soda? Cream soda. You, I thought it was funny often, when I was a kid. How often do you even fucking drink cream I soda? I do not like, remember the last time. About? But when I was a kid, I thought it was funny. So I remembered it. Okay. Yeah. That's what you retain. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we need to we need to burn through some of these. We have like no time. <laughs> yeah, Luke. Huh? Cream soda. Uh, hello. <laughs> hello, Linus and Luke. Greetings from Germany. I always wondered if you guys got in trouble or if sponsors frowned upon you guys using memes in your sponsored videos. Memes like 69 or 420. Uh, every once in a while we had uh, we had a video that was sponsored 
by someone. I don't remember. Was it was it HP? I don't know. Anyway, the 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 the, the product was their Z Workstation 420. And we managed to slip a lot of pot jokes into it, but there was one particular shot where we actually put like a a thing in the front grill of it and had it smoking. Like they had the computer smoking weed, and that <laughs> did not make it past the sensors. Wow. Oh yeah, wow. I remember I'm not that. Surprised. In ge- Jeez. In general, though, I think sponsors know what this is. Like, if you don't do your due diligence watching a couple videos from a channel before you throw money at them, that's on you. I I don't feel bad. Uh, any new house videos coming soon? I think it's the most engaging content on the channel. I don't know. Maybe if my pool ever gets finished. Speaking of which, there's been a new development there. Oh. Uh, we've issued an ultimatum. Oh. Uh, they, they, they've been... They, they told us it was going to be two weeks to completion three weeks ago. We've had to reschedule our electrician four times uh, because they keep just not showing up. Um, and so we basically said, look, this is ridiculous. You'll be here on Monday and you will be working continuously until the project is done or we're going public. Um, it's something I hate doing. I actually hate doing it. But this has actually been insane to the point of like yeah. should be criminal. No, it is. Oh, okay. In my opinion. Ah. I don't need any Allegedly. libel or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but, but they have, they have, in my opinion, from my experience, almost certainly broken multiple laws in the way that they've engaged with us. And they deserve, I think, uh, to never be in business again yeah. at this point. From what I've heard, I completely agree. Yeah. So... So if uh, if nothing happens on Monday, I will uh, I'll see you guys on I'll see you guys next Friday and I'll let you know how it's going. Um, there's another contractor that might be willing to pick up the job, but uh, from from looking at another review of these guys, even apparently it like took six months and was like pulling teeth to get a small job done. So I don't know. I guess we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, DLL, picking up some merch for Linus Voice, my wife. That's not Linus Voice, that's Borat Voice. But anyway, yes. You're going you're gonna to do it? No. Okay. Uh, with the growing size of LTT and improving Markbench, what steps are you taking to ensure GPU reviews are free of errors? So a couple things we've added. So Okay, so one is um, as we improve our machine vision capabilities, uh, we are expecting to be able to monitor not just for anomalies in our results, but also anomalies in the visuals of the game. Um, that's something that one of our team members actually has some experience with from testing mobile games at his previous job. And in the long term, we would like to be able to evaluate the visual fidelity of features like DLSS or FSR um, as part of the way that we present performance data for these GPUs. Um, that's going to take a long time. For now, at the very least, we've implemented a, a checking stage where the labs goes through the data and goes through the finished oh. videos to make sure that the writing team didn't miss anything. Not because the writing team is dumb or incompetent, but because it's often just crunch for these videos and things can get missed. Um, it's improved things a lot, but there's still room for us to continue to improve. Hey, LLD, do you guys think any labs content will be at LTX? Personally, I'd love to see some of the stuff y'all are working on demoed. For example, keyboard testing. That's a really good question. And right now the answer is no. I don't think we have anything planned for LTX. I mean, most of the labs equipment is... Pretty planted. Yeah, kind of bolted to the ground. <clears throat> um, huh. Yeah, I don't really know what to tell you. It could be interesting. I know, like... Uh... Uh, PAX had some multi-site stuff some years. Could be interesting one year to have like, oh, this would be really hard. I don't think we could do it actually. Well, we're offering tours of the lab as part of LTX. Yeah. So there's that. I'm thinking like if you, if we had if you had like another event, which was like you could you could go through some testing at the lab. Hmm. We're not close to there, and that would be very hard, and no, might we're not. not be feasible. Yeah, uh, no guarantees on that one. It'd be neat, but it's probably never going to happen. Hey, LLD, I often watch videos over Discord, screen share with friends. Some sites block screen sharing in this way. 
What is your opinion of this practice, both as a consumer and as float plane executives? I totally get why people do it. Um, absolutely. And also, yeah. there is absolutely ways around it. How would you even block that? I mean, there's ways to... Oh, right. Block screen capture. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway. Um, I mean, I can tell if you... If something shows up on your screen, there is a way to capture it. Yeah, I mean, uh, this is a tough one, right? Because as a consumer, I think it's super cool. It's one of the features that I actually pitched as something that would be really neat for Floatplane to have, like native support for. Um, but I can tell you now that the creator of whatever that is is not being compensated in any way for whatever that is. So take that for what it is, right? Um, if you if you If you're enjoying this content then the idea there is that you should maybe think that the person who created it should be compensated in some way or not. And that's that's kind of your call, right? But that's what's happening, and that's why they block it. Um, I don't think we're putting any effort into blocking it at this point in time, but we're also not a, a small creative team, and we're not sort of live or die depending on whether we get that hundred dollar check this month or whatever else it is right so we're quite diversified um yeah it's tough you just you just gotta think about what you're doing and understand the impact and make your call right yep linus what's with all the fancier sillier wordlier videos lately um i don't know it's just fun it's just pure fun i i like it it's, i like silly words i like i like grabbing your attention Look, it worked. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be in Taiwan for the next two weeks. Wonder why. Uh, do you recommend somebody in the tech industry go to Computex for fun with their significant other, or is it too formal? It's industry only. Um, CES, I, or wait, no, is it? CES is. I, 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 can, I can never remember. For, I'm pretty sure both of them, there is a way that you can buy a pass, but it's like really, really brutal. Well, the... They say that I think they're in the tech industry already. So we could kind of like, oh, they would just go. You're in the tech industry. They and don't you're going have for to go. To Taiwan right now, but you're not going to Computex. Yeah, but, but they would oh. go to Computex for. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah. This is very strange. Oh yeah, no. What? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Computex is fun. It's cool. It is. Yeah, go for it. See you there. <clears throat> Hello, Dan and Dan's assistants to the WAN show. I'm using the LTD screwdriver to perform jet engine maintenance nice. currently. Sick. Where is the most interesting place you have found your merch being used? I mean, there was that time that uh, Skating Olympian had our water bottle just like casually on TV oh, in the Olympics. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah. That was um, really cool. I'm trying to think. There's got to there's got to be some other cool stuff. Did any of the uh, Did any of the boys at NASA have any of our merch? Uh, yeah. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. I didn't actually see it on site, but we weren't like where they were doing that type of stuff anyways. So yeah. that might make sense. Um, that we've seen a lot of people review the screwdriver that do really cool stuff. We saw the guy that works on drift cars in Japan. Oh, yeah. Uh, we, we've seen a bunch of different people that do a bunch of random stuff that they need a screwdriver for. It's been very cool. Yeah. It's a good screwdriver. What can I say? Yeah. There's a bunch in potential, Linus, that are pretty specifically directed at you. Oh, yeah. There's go been some potential. that are directed at you that I've been able to answer for you, but not all of them. Okay. Torin asks, would you ever do an LTT Labs official quality certification for specific products like USB and HDMI? Um, it depends. We'd have to find a way to do it where it doesn't compromise the Labs' vision, which is to be a, a check and a balance on these certification bodies and these product manufacturing bodies. Um, I think that, you know, something like the way that 80 plus operates, um, theoretically is really good, but in practice has, um, I think been less, uh, less effective over more recent years. And I think that's where cybernetics has had an opportunity to step in and provide a more meaningful certification program. So if we were going to do something, I would just want to make sure that we're only doing it in an area where we have the the time and attention to focus on making sure that we are the be all and end all of standards for that particular vertical and that's a that's a really challenging thing to do it's gonna it's gonna take a long time 
Uh, so I can archive that now. Hey Linus, love the show and all the best with your new role. I was wondering if there were any upcoming videos for Channel Super Fun. Seems like it's on the back burner at the moment. The answer is you are right. It is on the back burner at the moment. Dennis has transitioned into a new role, so there is not a formal channel manager for Channel Super Fun right now, unfortunately. It's just not been sustainable for us from a financial standpoint. That's business speak for we were losing money on it again. I don't know what it is. I I I always really enjoyed doing Channel Super Fun when it was just kind of hanging out and doing a weird challenge or whatever, but there's there's a lot of things that come with being a bigger company that are not a lot of fun. Um, Channel Super Fun relied on just kind of spontaneity and uh, people participating just for the sheer fun of it and not worrying too much about things like, okay, prizes are something that are really tough. Like the meta's changed. People expect there to be like a giant prize for we give you a car doing something. Uh, but we've done things kind of like that in the past, even with small prizes. So when we did the um, Mario Kart AR racing thing oh, okay. uh, on LTT, we offered people winning a day off or something like that. I think it was, I, I forget, I forget exactly what it was. And the amount of backlash internally over not being selected to participate, so not getting yeah. a chance to win that, led us to create this whole convoluted program for Channel Super Fun where the participants were actually competing for a prize, but then everyone else internally could bet on the outcome and share the prize with the participant who won. So that way everyone could participate. And that it's just, it, it, basically, this is why we can't have nice things because it created a whole bunch of politics and uh, you know jockeying for being featured on the channel and complaining about not getting screen time or being in a role where you're not on screen or whatever else. And I just like, I can't, I just can't anymore. Um, that's why a lot of, you know, I'm not gonna name any specifics, but that's why a lot of those types of channels, the, the prizes, particularly when they're internal for the staff, it's just all fake. Like, come on guys, get real, right? <laughs> What do you want from me? <sighs> Let's keep churning through. Yeah. Linus, are you officially switching from the Steam Deck to the ROG Ally? Planning a 2 terabyte SSD upgrade in the Ally with Sabrent's new 2230 2 terabyte SSD. I think he's got one there. Um, indoor hoodie restock when? Uh, soon. Soon. I think we've actually got it nailed down and we're, we're, we're ready to go to mass production, but it's going to take a little bit more time. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm switching over to the Ally. I was actually on the Ioneo Next before the Ally. And one of the things I liked about it was that it had support for M.2 2280 drives, full-length drives. Although I think you could cram one in the Ally if you just had a little M.2 extension thing. And I'd like to put a bigger drive in it if I could. Finally caught one of these early. Uh, Linus is a fellow fan of CrossCode. What was your opinion on the post-game downloadable content? Um, and have you seen the in-depth videos of Radical Fish Games' new project? Uh, I didn't actually play the post-game DLC. I, um, I, just, I felt like the story ended in such a good place, and I was playing for the story, not for the dungeons. I actually found the dungeons a little tedious towards the end, especially that twin dungeon where you do one side, and then you come out, there's no story and character development whatsoever, and then you do the other side. It's like, oh, what a grind. Um, like the puzzles were really creative. It's a really, really well done game, but uh, I, I just didn't find anything that appealing about the DLC. Um, as for their new game, I haven't seen anything, but I will absolutely play it. I consider myself a Radical Fish fan. Hey, Dill, love the show. My fiance and I have been playing It Takes Two and having a blast. What is the first game you and Yvonne ever played together? Any other recommendations? Uh, I want to say Pocket Tanks. Oh, that's adorable. Look at this. I, I just go on YouTube and look, it's us saying goodbye. Uh, not not in the way that you think, though. But yeah, Pocket Tanks is uh, super fun, just ultra casual game. Lots of lots of different weapons and stuff. Uh, I think it's like five bucks or something like that. Assuming you can even find anywhere to buy it anymore. You can like put up walls and there's all these like cool little like different weapons and stuff that you can use and we we got to the point where it got like pretty intense and we got pretty good at it and stuff 
like here what this must have been some kind of like area of effect weapon or something uh yeah, this is pretty slow paced gameplay here guys anyway that doesn't really matter the point is yeah pocket tanks that's the first game we played together i think would you have taken the leap to start a Linus Media Group if other outlets like LTT, Gamers Next, were Nexus, uh, Hardware Unboxed, and MKBHD had existed at the time? I started LTT because my boss told me to. So... I, I guess so. The In leap fact, to LMG, not just LTT. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, because other stuff did exist at the time. There, there were other channels. They there just was. didn't happen to be those ones. Yeah. Linus, uh, seems like you have had bad luck with contractors for your house. Oh, oh God. <laughs> Thanks for that. Uh, painters, pool people, how can you find good contractors or trade workers? It's like interviewing anyone. You're going to get it right sometimes and you're going to get it wrong sometimes. And while theoretically, you know, you have the law on your side or whatever, and you can hold people accountable in practice. This is like, this is, it's the whole trust me, bro thing all over again. Yeah, that's right. I'm going there. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Luke, deep breaths. <laughs> at the end of the no, day, I agree with him. at the end of the day, a warranty or a law or anything only exists to the extent to which it's enforceable. One party has the has the willingness to honor the agreement, and the other party has the willingness and time and capability and to force the other to honor the agreement. It can be life ruining level expensive to actually try to get a company to follow through with what they're legally supposed to do and i know you're about to say small claims court sure you do it are you going to a handful will and then when you're done and they have that court order to pay you okay then what are you going to pursue them to actually write you the check what if they're fraudsters and they've been Ponzi scheming the whole thing, and their check's just going to bounce anyway. How, how are you going to follow that up? It just... Yeah. Um, it is what it is. I, we're, you know, we're, we, we hope that we're going to get this resolved in, a, in an amicable way, but I, I, don't, I don't know. Hi, LLD. I have a hybrid smartwatch with an e-ink display behind a set of dials, which has most smartwatch functionality and one month of battery life. Linus, would you use such a watch as a Pebble successor? Um, what was great about the Pebble was just the simplicity of it. It just showed me the text when a message arrived, and it had hardware buttons. Uh, that's that's something that I still miss. I actually still use a Pebble Time for uh, media control on my motorbike. I just have a Pebble Time just like magneted to my handlebars. Because gloves, yeah. Because when I got gloves on, it's still like the only <laughs> thing I can control. I think there are accessories that function in much the same way. But like, but I have a Pebble done, Time. Who cares? And yeah. the app is already on my uh, my old phone, which is what I use to listen to music when I'm riding my bike. So works perfectly for me. And it looks like the last one I have today. When you start someone as a new host, how do you evaluate whether they're a good fit to stay in the role? Do you give them specific training or is it just sink or swim? Uh, a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. I mean, the audience is going to give them all the feedback they could ever hope for. So, <laughs> hey, thanks, guys. <laughs> some of it valid, some of it phenomenally stupid. <laughs> Uh, LTT screwdriver been using a bunch lately any updates on metrics hex metric hex bits and the stubby version uh, Yeah, metric hex uh, doesn't seem to be here yet that I'm as up-to-date on that as you are You can message support though and hopefully they can get you sorted out and I do have another small little update on the store uh, Zach actually announced an LTT color version hey. of the jerry rig everything cool. razor knife So we don't have it in stock yet apparently <laughs> Thanks, Zach um, but we're going to have it and, uh, you guys can check out, I think it's his most recent video where he announced that. So that's pretty cool. Cool. And I think that's pretty much it for today. Sorry guys. It has to be a short show. We got to get to the airport. See you again next week. Oh, same bad time, different bad location, but same channel, I'll, same channel. I'll still be here. Bye. <laughs>
<laughs> Thanks, Vessie, Signal Wire, and Corsair for sponsoring the show. <laughs>